Hello, and welcome to McQuilling TV. I'm Claire Schmidt, and joining us again today is Connor Stone, Marine Transport Advisor at McQuilling Services. Glad to have you back on, Connor. Thanks, glad to be here. Well, now that we've passed through the first quarter of 2018, I wanted to hear what you've observed in the market in terms of tanker demand. Okay, so looking at tanker demand, uh, we saw growth um, of about 5% last year. Uh, this year, we expect 10 mile demand growth of about 2%, so a little bit of a deceleration uh, from last year. Uh, we continue to see uh, mostly stable um, Western crude uh, heading out to the east. However, we know that there's been a slight temporization of uh, West African flows, but we do expect those to uh, return uh, with the balance of the year. Uh, looking at the um, the U.S. crude market, um, exports have been fairly consistent, averaging about 1.5 million barrels per day, um, fluctuating with the Brent and WTI differential. Uh, looking at the, the Black Sea and Mediterranean market, a lot of the crude in that region is heading into Europe, but we also see a lot more volumes going out to the east. And this is keeping vessels on some good long-haul uh, trades. Uh, looking at the Caribbean, though, we see a lot of demand declines. Uh, VLCC loadings there through the first quarter of 2018 declined by about 13% year on year. And this is not a good thing for tankers. And through the balance of the year, we expect continued declines. So all in all, uh, similar trends to what we observed in the second half of last year. Uh, and we expect them to persist through the remainder of the year. OK, great. But what about the supply side? There seems to be a lot of excitement around the VLCC scrap market. Are we seeing a rebalancing of fundamentals? Um, a quick answer, yes. We're beginning to see. Uh, uh, early signs of rebalancing, more for the clean tankers. But looking at the VLCCs, we've seen about um, 19 vessels sold for scrap or conversion. Um, however, we haven't removed all these vessels from the trading fleet. That's because we note that some of them, instead of being shipped right to a yard for either scrapping or conversion, some of them are going to uh, what we describe as designated load regions, such as the Middle East. And it turns out that some of them are just being transferred to the new buyers or even being further um, conducting further trading activities for a short time period under their new buyer. So they can still take demand from the market, therefore we don't count them as a deletions. So going forward, we're going to use our remotely sensed uh, vessel position data to monitor their activity and determine whether they're heading to a scrapyard or uh, a shipyard for conversion. And then we will actually remove them from the trading fleet. Now, to look at the uh, addition side, we've seen about 44 vessels delivered to the fleet. That does not include uh, chemical ships. Um, that's all tankers, excluding the chemical ships. Um, and for the remainder of the year, we expect all fleets to expand, excluding the uh, MR product tankers. Uh, the chemical ships will continue to grow, but the MR product tankers and the Panamaxes will contract this year. Um, so you're starting to see signs of rebalancing, but we still see a lot of supply coming to the market. Um, just looking at the order book, uh, we saw 65 vessels added this year through the first quarter. And this is double um, what was ordered over the first quarter of 2017. So we still have a lot of supply to work through. And we expect the rebalancing is going to take some time. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. So still a lot of supply to still work through over the long term. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what we can expect for over the next couple of months? Yeah, so over the next few months, uh, we see uh, uh, refinery runs in the Middle East increasing as maintenance uh, comes down. We expect uh, runs to rise by about 900,000 uh, 900, barrels per day. Um, this is going to put a lot of upward support for Dubai-linked uh, crudes. So we, you're likely to see more Atlantic Basin volumes heading out to the east. Like I said before, the West African market is expected to come back, and a lot of these volumes will be shipped on VLCCs out to the east. Uh, looking at the U.S., uh, crude demand is expected to rise to an average of about 17.2 million barrels per day from May to August, while production averages only about 10.5 million barrels per day. And so this, coupled with lower production in Canada, is expected to, to contract the uh, North American crude balance uh, pretty significantly. So we expect to see more volumes being imported into the U.S. Gulf uh, from the Arabian Gulf as opposed to uh, the Caribbean, because you have a lot of pro production declines there. But uh, we see, we expect a lot more volumes to come from the Arabian Gulf. So we're projecting TD1 to average around world scale 23 um, over May and June period. Uh, looking at Suzmax demand, uh, we expect uh, there's some risk for pressures coming out of West Africa because a lot more volumes are going to go onto VLCCs, and that'll take demand away from the smaller tankers. Uh, looking at the Black Sea Med market, um, you've got uh, European refinery maintenance coming down. Uh, over the next three months, we, 
refinery runs are expected to jump by about 400,000 barrels per day. So we should see a lot of volumes heading into Europe, but also out to the east, keeping vessels on the long haul trades. So all in all, we expect pretty stable demand over the next few months. That was a lot of useful information, Connor. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, no problem. We hope you can come back soon. Sure, anytime. That wraps up another edition of McQuilling TV. Thanks for tuning in.